The wars around the world are starting to escalate, and it's clear that the geopolitical situation is not improving, spilling over into the financial markets. Cryptocurrencies are plunging this weekend, Wall Street futures are set to open in the red, and commodities could go bonkers. So, which markets do we need to be looking at today? We break down this week's earnings season and the big news stories and levels that you need to be watching, including stocks, cryptos, increased volatility, commodities, and of course, the biggest earnings. Let's go through it all right now. There's so much to cover and this week is going to be... Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest macroeconomic news stories to key levels that you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help better educate yourself about how these markets actually work together. So let's talk about what happened in the market and the outlook to come. U.S. stock market futures rose slightly on Sunday as investors seemed to breathe a sigh of relief following Saturday's aerial bombardment of Israel by Iran, which wasn't as severe as feared. Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures, S&P 500 Futures, and NASDAQ 100 Futures were all up roughly 0.2% as of 11 p.m. Eastern, crude oil prices dipped 0.5% to $85.25. After initially plunging on Saturday, cryptocurrency prices rebounded on Sunday with Bitcoin once again surpassing the $65,000 level, although still well below the nearly $71,000 level, seen on Friday. On Friday, the Dow posted its biggest weekly loss since March 2023, driven by concerns about potential Iranian retaliation for an apparent Israeli airstrike on Iran's embassy compound in Damascus, Syria. For the week, the Dow sank 2.4%, the S&P 500 slid 1.6%, and the Nasdaq declined 0.5%. Israel reported that 99% of the more than 300 missiles and drones launched from Iran on Saturday were intercepted, resulting in minimal damage and casualties. On Sunday, President Joe Biden urged restraint, and the U.S. made it clear it will not participate in any Israeli offensive measures against Iran. While some experts anticipate highly volatile trading in oil this week, with much depending on potential Israeli retaliation, others suggest that the manner in which Iran carried out the attack may reduce risk. I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of them. Now let's cover some information and data related to the market. We begin with March U.S. CPI annual inflation, which rose to 3.5%, surpassing expectations for a reading of 3.4%. Core CPI inflation also increased to 3.8% year-on-year, compared to forecasts for a gain of 3.7%. Overall, the CPI data highlights the lack of progress in the Federal Reserve's ongoing efforts to bring inflation sustainably back down to its 2% target. Considering these disappointing numbers, it reinforces the case for the Fed to hold off on cutting rates anytime soon. The question now is, what does Powell do next? Despite Fed Chair Powell's dismay, the Producer Price Index, PPI, comes in hot. Headline U.S. PPI rose 2.1% year-on-year, accelerating from 1.6% in February. At 2.1%, annual PPI is now back at its highest level since September 2023. U.S. Core PPI rose 2.4% annually, compared to estimates for an increase of 2.3% and up from 2.1% in February. Considering these figures, the Fed will not be in a rush to cut rates after another hot inflation report. The Fed's battle with inflation is far from over. As energy prices continue their upward trend, wholesale inflation levels will remain elevated for a longer duration than financial markets currently anticipate. As such, I maintain my call that there will be no rate cuts until 2025. However, the Fed's preferred core personal consumption expenditures, PCE index, is due on April 26th. When translating CPI and PPI into PCE, the results appear disappointing. If the current inflation trend continues, it could spur a pocket 20% correction before the election. 
higher U.S. inflation is dashing investors' hopes for multiple Federal Reserve interest rate cuts this year, while opening the door to 5% Treasury yields across the board and cleaving the stock market into distinct categories of winners and losers. Winners are identified as companies with ample cash and little debt, sheltering them from the need to borrow or refinance at higher interest rates. Before Middle East tensions came to the fore on Friday, technology stocks were driving the equity market to a mostly higher finish only a day after Wednesday's hotter-than-expected consumer price inflation report for March. By contrast, small-cap companies, as reflected in the Russell 2000 Index, suffered some of the worst post-CPI reactions, ending the week down by 2.9%. The prospect of either no 2024 Fed rate cuts or fewer than the three-quarter point reductions projected by policymakers has led to relatively sharp and rapid increases in Treasury yields, moves that typically produce problems for the stock market as a whole. Something a bit different might be going on this time around, however. Higher market-based interest rates are impacting sectors differently, extending the survival of the fittest theme that began with the onset of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Anything sensitive to interest rates would be the losers, like cryptocurrency, small cap companies, and the industrial sector, which had been driven earlier this year by a lot of hope and expectations for rate cuts, said Ben Emmons, senior portfolio manager and head of fixed income for New Edge Wealth in New York, which manages more than $45 billion in assets. It's difficult to say at what levels the benchmark S&P 500 or U.S. stocks overall should be trading, considering the continued strength of the economy, Eamon said via phone. Meanwhile, the risk of war in the Middle East threatens to unleash further inflationary pressures with oil prices likely to rise, followed by Treasury yields. The bottom line is that U.S. economic growth isn't being curtailed as much as many had expected, despite the highest interest rates in more than 20 years, at between 5.25% to 5.5%, said Todorova. However, if inflation continues to rise and forces the Fed to deliver another hike in 2024. The stock market rally is likely to stall, and a deeper correction is likely to unfold as soon as such probability gains traction, Todorova said. That's the least probable scenario, and one that would likely leave the Dow Jones Industrial Average trading around 37,200, the S&P 500 at roughly 5,000, and the NASDAQ 100 at about 17,200 by year end. The next set of data examines historical trends when the Fed initiated rate cuts. Interest rate cuts conducted outside of recessions have historically been bullish. Since 1950, if the U.S. economy did not enter a recession within a year of the first Fed cut, the S&P 500 consistently showed gains at three and nine months after. Stocks also typically recorded positive returns, six and 12 months after the first cut, with the exception of 1968. From 1950 onward, the S&P 500 experienced an average gain of 10% in the three months following the first rate cut without a recession. Achieving a soft landing is crucial for sustaining stock market growth. The next set of data examines historical trends when the Fed initiated rate cuts. Interest rate cuts conducted outside of recessions have historically been bullish. Since 1950, if the U.S. economy did not enter a recession within a year of the first Fed cut, the S&P 500 consistently showed gains at three and nine months after. Stocks also typically recorded positive returns six and 12 months after the first cut, with the exception of 1968. From 1950 onward, the S&P 500 experienced an average gain of 10% in the three months following the first rate cut without a recession. Achieving a soft landing is crucial for sustaining stock market growth. The Fear and Greed Index currently stands at a level of 46, indicating a neutral sentiment. If we can observe fear or extreme fear by the end of the next month, it could potentially set the bottom for the next rally. Here are the most anticipated earnings I'll be watching this week. I've marked them for you guys. If you want to play any earnings, please be careful. If you need the picture, feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot. All right, let's see what key events for this week we have on Monday. U.S. Retail Sales NY Fed Manufacturing Survey. Goldman Sachs, GS, Earnings. On Tuesday, Bank of America, BAC, Morgan Stanley, MS, Johnson & Johnson, JNJ, United Health, UNH, Earnings Fed Chair. Powell Speech. 
On Wednesday, Fed Beige Book and on Thursday, Initial Jobless Claims, Philly, Fed Manufacturing Survey, Existing Home Sales, Netflix, NFLX, Earnings and on Friday, American Express, AXP, Earnings. For tonight's video, there won't be any charts, but I promise to make another video later in the week discussing the charts I'm focusing on and sharing my overall market outlook. I appreciate your support and thank you for watching. If you find value in the video, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing it with others. See you later, and bye for now.